All right, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about reaction rates in chemistry. And I'm going to sh I'm shifting gears here a little bit. I mean, I'm I'm normally doing physics here, but I, I really need to update this with some chemistry videos. And I'm going to focus mainly on the math concepts here of chemistry because it seems like in chemistry whenever math comes into the picture, everybody runs for the hills in panic. Uh, if we can't do uh, a simple stoichiometry or a um, you know factor label unit conversion elimination of, of something, um, there tends to be a little bit of a, of a panic mode that goes into effect here. And I just want to talk about reaction rates because this is kind of an interesting concept here. Um, you're you're basically uh, going to be determining a reaction based on information that you're given. And so when we talk about reactions, basically um, when we talk about you know what's happening in a reaction we basically have the reactants and they go to the products right when we have a basic reaction products right and normally what you know we just say oh this is what you start with this is what you finish with you know so it may have all reacted it may have not all reacted but we don't really care what happens here what happens in between So this is what we care about now. This is what we're trying to figure out now. What happens in between? Okay, in between. So how fast are these are these reactants going to products? And how fast is each of this each of these going? So how fast? Seem to be having issues here with this board here. So how fast? Okay, are each of these going? Okay, so this is what we're going to address now with reaction rates. How fast are they going and how fast are each of these going? And there's a basic rate equation here, which is this. The rate of the reaction rate equation is the concentration factor times the concentration of A to the, mag to the rate order which, of which it is, which is M, times the concentration of B times the rate order of which it, which, which it is. And so we may get some information here that shows us like a basic table okay and this basic table in essence what this is okay just so you know if you see this this is just a snapshot okay so for example when the reaction rate which is in moles per second that's how many moles are disappearing per second because these are the reactants okay these are the reactants before they react okay when they're disappearing at a rate of two moles per second, let's just say, there was a concentration of 0.1 of A and 0.1 of B. When there is a rate of disappearance of eight moles per second, there was a rate of a concentration of 0.1 of A and 0.4 of B. When they're disappearing at 32 moles per second, the rate of uh, the concentration of A was 0.2 and the concentration of B was 0.4. So what's the whole point of this? Why are we given this information? Uh, what is what is so mysterious about this in terms of solving this, right? Well, the whole point is that we need to determine this rate equation if we want to find out more information about our our reaction here. And so sometimes we'll, you know these are this this is just you know I guess we could call this an empirical snapshot. So empirical. You're just you're just observing. You're like, okay, when the rate was when it's disappearing at this rate, this is what's here, this rate here, this okay. But the basic math of this doesn't change. I mean, what what we're basically looking at here is a is, is a very basic equation here. How many unknowns do we have? We don't know k. We don't know m. We don't know n, right? Three unknowns. So how many equations do we need? Three. So how many sets of data do we have? Three pretty basic stuff here this is algebra 2 and again I'm, I'm basically pointing this out and I point this out a lot in physics to, to students and they're having trouble with physics problems I say this is algebra 2 and they look at me like I'm crazy uh, but you know the reason it, it's more difficult in science is just because it's not it's not you're gonna have to think and set up the question more it's not like it's laid out in math you just go in and they give you the three equations three unknowns you solve it you're done you know however you want to do it this is a little bit different so just kind of have to set up the equation. So the first one I'm going to go here, I'm going to label this equation equation number one. And I'm going to go ahead here and they give us the rate, which is two. 
times k. The concentration of A is 0.1. To the m, the concentration of E is 0.1. To the n. And there's one, there's one equation. I've got three unknowns. I'm done. Next equation. I'm going to do this in green. Okay. Next equation is basically going to say the rate was 8. And I have K. Now the concentration of A when the rate was 8 is 0.1 to the M. And the concentration of B is 0.4 to the N. There's my next equation. Third equation. Plugging this in, 32 equals K. Rate of reaction is now for, sorry, the rate of reaction is 32. Uh, it's actually, the, it's 32, the constant is K, and then now we have 0.2 for A to the M, and now we have 0.4 to the N. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this, this long application here, and I'm going to show you a shortcut at the end to do this, okay? But we're, you need to understand the formal application here. The trick to this is you're always going to see um, two of these that are going to be matching pairs. You see this here? See these matchings here? 0.1 and 0.1 and 0.4 and 0.4. Okay, that's going to be a clue here because we're going to divide out two equations, okay? So on the first one here, I'm going to divide equation 2 by equation 1. That's, that's totally legal in math. You can do that. There's nothing illegal about it. It's completely kosher here. So k to the point 1 to the m, point 0.4 to the m, n, excuse me. So equation 2, k, divided by equation 1. Equation 1 is our blue equation here. Divided by equation 1. So this is 2 equals k to the point 1 to the m, to the point 1, to the n. And I'm dividing these out, okay? This is division, completely legal. No problems here with this. What are we going to get? I'm going to write this in black now. I'm going to divide these out. So 8 over 2, what does that give us? That gives us 4, okay? k over k cancels. 0.1 to the m over 0.1 to the m cancels. So I'm left with 0.4 over 0.1 to the n. And if I divide that out, I remember I can divide these out if they're to the same exponent using the power rule. I can say equals 4 to the n. Okay? And so that way we know n equals 1. How about that? Okay? Next one, I'm gonna divide um, I'm gonna divide equation 3 by equation 2. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that over here. Okay, so we'll kind of just partition this off here just so we know that we're doing a different side over here. I'm going to say equation 3, okay, divided by um, equation 2, which I'll show you in a minute. So this equals, let's just, let's start here. Okay, equation 3. So I've got 32 equals k to the point 2 to the m, to the point 4, to the n, okay? And then I'm going to divide that by equation 2, divided by equation 2, just so you can see very clearly. Um, 8 equals k to the point 1, to the m, to the point 4, to the n. I'm dividing that out. And the same thing, again, I'm going to take my black marker here and I'm just going to kind of strike these out. So 32 over 8 is 4, right? And the k's cancel, you see this? And the 0.4 to the n's cancel. So I'm going to have 0.2 over 0.1. And again, using the power rule, I can, I can divide these out and keep them both to the n. So this is going to be 2 to the m. So 2 to what power gives me 4? Well, m equals 2. So now I've gone ahead and solved for n and m. So we're getting closer, right? We're getting a lot closer. So if we go back to our rate equation here, the rate of the reaction is going to equal K, which is the reaction constant, A, K, to the, remember we're looking at up here, this is A to the M, B to the N, okay? So the M is 2, 
and B is the end is 1. Okay, this means this is second order, just so you know, and this is first order. Okay, and it's going to basically tell us how fast they're going to disappear. And it's, it's very useful later on, but you know, right now we're just determining what the, the reaction is. So now we're going to solve for k. This is kind of an interesting thing. This k, um, this is a constant, but the units are different always. Okay. So how do I find k? Well, I just pick a point and plug it in, right? So it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's take this one, 2. 0.1.1, okay? So I know I have 2 equals k to the point 0.1, sorry, point 0.1 squared to the point 0.1 to the 1 to the 1. So k is now going to equal 2 over point 0.1 cubed, which is just going to be 2,000. 2,000 what? This is a little bit crazy here. This this k is going to change units. This is this is not. You would expect a constant to be the same. It's not. It's not like specific heat, which is a, you know a basic constant like joules per gram to C. This k is going to change depending upon exactly what's going on in, in the reaction. Okay. So how would you find out the units of k? Let's just let's just kind of look look at that for a second here. So the rate here is always going to be in moles per second, right? That never changes. That's how many moles are disappearing per second, right? But we know that's going to equal K, and then we said we have moles here squared, and we have moles here to the first, okay? So this is what's a little bit bizarre about K. The units change. So if I divide that out, my K Remember, I'm just looking at I'm just looking at um, you know this this part this part here basically basically looking at this. My k is actually going to end up being one over the units are going to be one over um, moles squared per second in this example. Okay not necessarily in another example it just really changes it's in and, and there's a there's a formula for this i mean we can we can determine this but um you know i just want to show you how how you could solve it so basically when we're talking about our rate of reaction we know now we can say our reaction rate equation the rate is going to equal 2000 okay times a squared times b to the first. Okay. And we know now that my units here of this guy are going to be, you know, 1 over moles squared per second. Okay. Just to kind of point that out, I think that's a it's an important thing to talk about cuz this is not a really uh I don't know. This is kind of a strange topic in terms of the k's changing all the time in terms of their their units. Now, now that we've done that, we've solved our rate equation. It seems like a lot of damn work to do just to solve one equation. Let me show you a fast way to do this. Okay, that's the long way. That's the formal way. Let me show you a fast way. Okay, what you need to ask yourself is this: when you have when when you're basically changing here for b. Okay, if this changes, what factor does this change by? Then you need to ask yourself, what factor did that change by? Okay, so here's the fast way. Here's the shortcut. I'm going to save you some time here so you can get some hours in your life back. All right, so let's say that I, I'm looking at B. Let's say B was times 4, right? If I increase the concentration of times 4, how much did the rate change? Times 4. Okay. So the reaction rate here is what? When this went by 4, this went by 4. Okay, so that's 1. Okay, so that's 1, right? Take a look here. If I took a look over at this one, okay, when A doubles, how much did the rate double? 
this is times 4, right? So here's how you do this, basically. Basically, turn that into the same base. 4 is what? 4 is basically going to be the same as 2 squared, right? Okay. And this is, um, again, this one is 4 to the 1 equals 4 to the 1. So when they're the same base, you can compare it, basically, right? So this, sorry, this one right here, when this one doubles, that one increased by 4. So that means that the basic, uh, the, the rate here is 2. And when this one went by 4, this one went by 4, and the, you know, you're comparing the exponents, right? So this one is just 1. Pretty simple, right? So this one times 4, this is times 4, it's 1, right? And so n equals 1. Is that what we got down here? It sure is, right? And when this one basically increased, I doubled this one. Uh, this one went times 4. So double here, it goes by 4. Write it with the same base. That's very straightforward there. The m is 2. Is that what we got for m? Sure is, right? So you can just look at these tables and just quickly tell what's going on. Now to find the k, you still have to plug in the numbers and determine what that was. But again, you can very quickly do this shortcut here and determine what's going on in terms of the rate of the reactions of this uh, of of these of these products here, of these reactants here. Excuse me. So that's all I've got for you in this video. I hope you uh, got something out of this, and uh, hopefully we've demystified the concept of reaction rates and determining the uh, reaction rate equations from some empirical data. And again. It is important to understand the long uh, method here of dividing out the equations to solving these, uh, but um, you know the shorthand method works just as well, and you can very quickly just look at this information and tell right away uh, which one is, which one is first order, which one is second order, just by how much these change, uh, how much the the rate changes versus the change in the the reactants. All right, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.